My personality makes me something of a chess collector. I love to find a new game, brilliancy, study, opening trap, whatever. I'm meticulous about saving these moments and I love to share them, such as here on my YouTube channel. There is, however, one game that I remember seeing back in college that was absolutely brilliant and striking and memorable to me, and for years since, I've been looking for the game and have never been able to find it. By Googling it, by searching various databases, anything. I remembered that it was something like Ronin vs. Liss, or maybe Ronin vs. Kiss, and I wasn't sure if these were first names or last names or what. Every so often, I'd remember the game and I'd go looking for it, but I could never find it until I recently found a collection of brilliant games in an old database that I had archived. Sure enough, there was the game, Ronan Lev vs. Aaron Liss, two players I really don't know anything about from 1998. This game is just as brilliant and satisfying a game as I remembered. Lev opens the game here with pawn to d4, and Liss is going to respond with the Grunfeld defense, g6, and eventually striking out with pawn to d5. Of course, this is very theoretical, but I'm not really a Grunfeld player with either color, so I'm going to skirt the theory very, very briefly. Here, after bishop g7, we get the bishop g5 line, knight e4, which is an aggressive response, and now pawn takes d5. This is actually the most popular response in the database, though I do note that Stockfish 15 doesn't really like this pawn capture on d5 and prefers, for example, bishop h4 or bishop to f4. Um, I don't really know anything about the current state of theory, but I tend to think that Stockfish 15 basically is the current state of theory, so I'm not sure that pawn takes d5 is the best move. It does lead to very interesting play in this game, though. Here we get knight takes on g5 going after that bishop. It's nice to capture a bishop in the opening. Bishops are better than knights. And of course, after knight takes g5, this knight does feel a little bit out of place over on g5. What's it really doing there? Now we get pawn to e6, expanding and attacking that knight and also looking to just regain the pawn on d5 and maybe re-add a central pawn into the mix with e takes d5. Here, queen a4 check, which seems to be the only really challenging move. And there is a theoretical note here that says that c6 is the best move and Stockfish 15 does agree and thinks that black has no problems after pawn to c6. But in the game, black plays bishop to d7, which is actually very interesting, and it seems that bishop d7 really contains the whole idea that follows, which includes sacrificing this rook on a8. So this is going to be really quite challenging for white to meet, especially if white's not theoretically prepared, and the way the game goes uh, kind of indicates that white isn't so theoretically prepared. So bishop d7, very enterprising and interesting. Here, queen b3, and now the knight, the pawn, and the queen are attacking e6, and the queen is attacking b7. And if the queen captures on b7, then the rook on a8 is likely to be trapped. So black says, actually, that's my whole point. I'm sacrificing that rook on a8, and I'm going to get a lot of counterplay. Queen takes g5. So queen takes b7. White doesn't really have a choice now because otherwise you're just down a knight. And this rook is indeed trapped. Black castles here. And now after queen takes a8, we get here bishop takes d4. And in this position, black has sacrificed an exchange and actually at least temporarily a pawn. But as often happens in pawn to d4 openings, if white gets distracted, for example, by capturing on b7, then the king is still stuck in the middle. And when you play pawn to d4, you're not necessarily in a position to castle on the queen side, in most cases, certainly not here, it's illegal, and you may have neglected your king side development. The bishop hasn't moved yet, and you still have to advance either the e pawn or the g pawn to get the bishop out and castle. So the fact that white's king is in a very uncertain spot for potentially quite a lot of time really does give black a lot of compensation here for the sacrificed exchange. Pawn to e3 is played. The computer actually likes rook to d1, but e3 just feels so natural. You're advancing and attacking the bishop, and you're letting this bishop out. Now, after pawn to e3, there's actually an interesting immediate aggressive option available to black. Black could play bishop takes e3, 
And the point is after pawn takes, queen takes, bishop e2, the most natural move in the position, black has queen to b6, kind of an interesting bishop sacrifice with the purpose of playing a retreating move, but the retreating move intends knight to a6. And actually, there is no way for white to deal with knight to a6. The queen is going to have to be surrendered. It makes me think a little bit of the game report versus Nepomneshi from the candidates, uh, which did not go well for report, and this is unlikely to go well for white. Um, game's not over, but black definitely has an advantage after eventually playing knight a6 and then winning the queen on a8 for the rook. However, after pawn to e3, black doesn't go for this bishop takes e3 move. Black plays another move, which is also really quite strong. Black is kind of spoiled for choice. I do think bishop takes e3 is a little more clear, but the way the game goes, uh, one can really enjoy the play that got black gets after playing queen e5 and keeping the tension. So queen e5 is played, which puts immediate pressure here on the knight on c3. So this basically forces rook c1, defending that knight on c3. And now pawn takes d5. Black regains a pawn. And the pawn has some dynamic potential because it could eventually, if the bishop moves, advance to d4, which could be a big, big problem for white. So pawn takes d5. Queen to b7 <laughs> doesn't feel very satisfying to move the queen out, but nothing else is actually really any better. Queen b7 is the top computer move. Knight c6, so we have an idea here of rook to b8. In this position, the notes to the game uh, and the computer's best move indicate that white should play knight e2 here, which keeps things relatively unclear. Uh, but it's really hard to play a move like knight e2. Like, I would just never want to play knight e2 and then block in this bishop. And in my kind of thinking about this position as white, I'm like, my number one goal is to develop the bishop on f1 and hope that I can castle. So the idea of playing knight to e2 and just burying that bishop is just a hard one to stomach. The point, though, to knight e2 is that you are attacking this bishop on d4 here, and you're attacking the knight on c6. However, the computer points out that after knight e2, black can continue to sacrifice. We can here play after knight e2, bishop to b6, saving the bishop, and so white's only real follow-up is now to capture on c6, following through on the second threat in the position. But after bishop takes, queen takes, and queen takes b2, black has two pawns for the piece. And black is also threatening to take this pawn over here, or black has one pawn and is about to get a second pawn, sorry. And black also has bishop to a5 check here, a lot of checks on the first rank, and actually the computer says that black is still better here, which isn't shocking because, again, white is still a long way from finishing development, castling, and resolving the issues in this position, and black pieces are threatening. So still dangerous after this, but white should have played knight e2 uh, objectively, the best try here in the position. Instead, white plays queen b3, pulling back, and now rook b8, gaining a tempo on the queen. The queen pulls uh, back to c2, and now bishop to b6. And this is the best move in the position, and is also just a very uh, strong move, because after bishop to b6, the bishop is out of the way, so d4 is coming. If black didn't have pawn to d4 coming, then, you know, white could just develop the bishop castle and be like, hey, I have an extra exchange. What are you doing? But d4 with the king on e1 is happening very quickly, and it's a big problem for white. So bishop to b6, bishop to e2, the most natural move in the position. Please let me castle. If I get one more move, I'm just better. But boom, pawn to d4, coming with tempo, hitting the knight right here, and ripping open the e-file. So after d4, white goes ahead and castles, which the computer doesn't like, but uh, everything else sucks too, so hey. And after pawn takes d4, we get knight takes d4, hitting the queen and also attacking the bishop on e2. So we're attacking with a gain of time and making it very hard for white to castle. Queen d2, black has a lot of good choices here, but bishop a5, as played in the game, is one of the best choices. So now if white castles, then you can just take on c3, take on e2, you're winning material, winning the game pretty easily. In this position, notes to the game indicate that f4 is the best move for white, and then they say that after queen takes e2 check, you know, based off of this pin here, 
along the uh, A5 to E1 diagonal simplifies to a basically equal position after knight takes E2, bishop takes, king takes, uh, rook takes, king here attacking the knight and the rook, rook takes, king takes D4, black has a pawn for the exchange, can capture on G2, and fair enough. This does simplify to an equal-ish endgame. But after f4, as flashy as queen takes e2 check is, it does not need to be the move that black plays in this position. And black can just play queen c5 and say, hey, I'm still attacking here. I have moves like rook e8 coming, or maybe I'm just going to develop this bishop in here. And are you going to castle? You just played pawn to f4, so... I don't think you're going to castle because I'm going to get to take your bishop with double check. And this is actually a huge problem for white. Just playing queen to c5 saying I'm down in exchange, but my attack is monstrous is plus four according to the engine. So in the game, white plays the move king to f1, which the notations give uh, as inaccurate, but I actually think it's the best move available to white. Uh, I'm going to change that to uh, indicate that it's the best move, but it still sucks. Black is like plus two. In this position, black plays what seems to be an accuracy. Rook to e8, and the computer here points out that white can play something like bishop c4, and black doesn't actually have a follow-up. Black has enough compensation, but black is not winning. However, uh, instead of rook to e8, black could have played knight takes e2. And one can understand a reluctance to trade down in this position, but after queen takes e2, queen g5, it seems that black actually has a huge attack here despite remaining down an exchange. You're attacking the rook over here after the rook moves. You know, white also has to worry about rook takes b2, and then simple moves like bishop to c6 are really, really strong. The computer indicates that this is a plus to attack. Instead, though, uh, not capturing on e2 and then going for this queen g5 after king f1, black played rook e8. And now in this position, white needed to play something like bishop c4. Instead though, white plays the move bishop to d3. And this proves to be a serious mistake. It's almost the losing mistake. After bishop d3, black has an incredible move. Knight to f3. I love this move so, so much. So knight f3 is trying to get white to capture, and then white is just going to find the king buried after bishop to h3 check, which is the way the game goes. However, white could have in this position played a little more stoutly in defense, and white could have played queen to e3. It's a hard move to play, and black gets really, really good compensation after knight takes h2 check, and then king g1, and black can trade queens and pull the knight back to g4. Technically, white's still up in exchange, although black now has a pawn for it, but this e3 pawn is in massive trouble, and black is much, much better in this position, but maybe not yet winning. However, after knight f3, white did accept the sacrifice knight, which we can all be grateful for because it leads to some incredible play, but objectively, not a good choice for white. After g takes f3, we get bishop to h3 check, which is actually a little bit of an inaccuracy, although it's still probably close to winning, but could have captured on c3 and basically played in the same way, but not allowed white one extra option, which we'll see in a moment. After bishop h3, of course, king g1 is forced here, and now bishop takes c3. So in this position, white has one option that was not available if black has not played bishop h3 check yet, and that is queen to h6 attacking the loose bishop on h3. After queen to h6, black has some good options, but it seems like the best is bishop takes b2, attacking the rook, and then white captures down here, black captures down here, and then white plays like king g2. And in this position, black is up a pawn, and white's position certainly looks really, really crappy. But on the other hand, it's opposite colored bishops, and it's not ever, ever easy to win an opposite colored bishop position like this, especially without clear targets. And the attack, despite white's kind of gross looking pawn structure, is basically at an end. I think black should be winning, but it's really not clear to me how, and certainly white can resist very, very hard in this position. However, white did not find this line with queen h6, and instead, in this position, white played queen to e3, and now this is basically crunch time. 
Black finds the best move and another amazing and beautiful move. It is bishop to d2. Such a gorgeous move. Putting the bishop on prees and hitting the queen and rook with this little fork here and offering a queen trade when you think, you know, you're never going to want to offer a queen trade because you've sacrificed material. But if white captures here with queen takes, rook takes, then the rook is hit and black is threatening mate in one with rook to g5. So this basically just wins the game. As a result, after bishop d2, white really doesn't have a choice and white needs to capture the sacrificed bishop. At this point, white is up a rook, although it is this rook on h1, which is a sucky, sucky rook. So that's, I don't know, let's call it like material is equal and black is attacking and black is winning. Black's next move here is super important, otherwise none of this is working. It is the move queen to d5, an excellent move. The basic point here is that black is threatening queen takes f3 and then queen to g2 mate or queen g4 mate. Additionally, black is keeping an eye on queen g5, which could be mate if the queen ever leaves the defensive things. And white also needs to watch out for rookie one mate in some positions, for example, rook c3, then you have a nice combination with rookie one, queen takes, and queen g5. So how is white to defend this f3 point here? Well, it turns out to not be easy to do because the bishop is pinned to the queen, so you don't have any move like bishop e4. And any queen move, which is the only way to defend f3, is going to drop the bishop on d3 when is white even really up material? You're up an exchange that is defined by this rook. So unfortunately, that solution is the best available for white. Queen f4 defending f3, but giving up the bishop on d3. And like I said, technically black is down an exchange here, but rook h1. Of course, we should expect black to win now, but black does win in style. Queen g3, queen to d7, calmly defending that monster of a bishop on h3. f4, and now rook e2, threatening the pawn on b2, but are you ever going to capture it? a4, no, you're not going to capture it. You're just going to go here and say, hey, how about I just checkmate you on e1? White plays queen c3, and this is a great moment to pause your video and try to find the last move that is played in this game. Well, black has many, many good choices in this position. Basically, everything's winning. You don't have to do anything. You just are winning. You could just sit and enjoy this position. But black finds the most pretty and clear move in the position. It is rook c2, a very delightful finish. The queen and the rook are hit. And if either captures, there will be mate on either g4 or on e1 or ultimately d1. There's no way to defend all of these points here with the king confined and black just needing one check. The most resilient try would seem to be rook takes c2 when this is covered and there's still queen g3 against queen g4, but of course black just plays queen g4 anyway and you get to block one check, but there is no block to this check and this is checkmate. As a result, after the incredible move rook c2, white did resign in this position. I hope that you've enjoyed this game and this video. Presenting brilliant games that I think you might not have seen before is basically my favorite thing to do on this channel. I also have a playlist of brilliant games that you are unlikely to have seen before. You can click it right now. Also, as long as you're clicking things, it wouldn't be a bad thing if you were to click subscribe or to like the video. That certainly helps the channel grow and is tremendously appreciated. Thank you so much and have a brilliant day.